everybody. Got a new truck on the bench. Finally got, been wanting this forever, finally got the Axial Capra by Horizon Hobby. I've been wanting this for a while. It's uh, brings me back to the having the bomber, which I loved that truck. It was a great truck, went anywhere. It was just too big. I didn't like the big axles, 2.2 tires. Just wasn't. I didn't find it challenging enough. Whereas this is a, as everyone knows, it's a comp-based truck. So I can put it, you know, in areas that these trucks behind me won't necessarily go without serious modifications. But as everyone knows, we've got the the uh, portal axles, which are first for me. I have not run portal axles on a RC truck before, so pretty big. All new transmission with dig. I probably won't use the dig. Um, maybe eventually I will, but I'm not too worried about. I've never had to use dig before, so. I want to challenge myself without having to use it and then get as good as I can with the truck the way it is then maybe try this whole dig thing out but I'm just not really worried about the dig at the moment um, it's got all the good uh, all the nice hardened gears in it this is obviously the ultimate builders kit Capra uh, Aluminum bodied shocks, CV, CV front axles, all uh, stainless steel links, HD um, wild bore drive shafts, which is definitely pretty cool. Um, most of the trucks have those, so it's not a uh, big difference. Like I'm pretty sure the 10-2 behind me, both 10-2s have the wild bore drive shafts. Maybe not the deadbolt, that's a little older. But I'm pretty sure the Power Wagon, the Raw Builders Kit has that. Uh, it does come with a LED light bar. Probably gonna put that in. I've, uh, I haven't run lights. Just never really found. I had a light bar on the bomber, but I never hooked it up. So, may as well try. Full on interior. Actual plastic molded grill in the front, which yeah, I don't think any of my trucks have ever had that either. It's always just been a Lexan grill. Both of those up behind me have Lexan grills. Uh, nice little spots in the back there to put your electronics. Definitely a handy thing. And uh, it's got the new servo saver, which has the metal inserts, so it kind of helps keep that plastic servo horn going for a little bit longer. I know a lot of people don't uh, like keeping them. I normally don't keep the uh, the plastic servo horns, but why not give it a try? I mean, it's that breaking point. So instead of your servo breaking, you'll break the plastic servo horn. So that is kind of a nice thing to have. Uh, unless you have a super strong servo that can just do whatever. Um, obviously there's the list of things you're going to have to buy. This of course comes with rims. Uh, they are the your typical three piece um, you probably see it better there. Three piece rims that uh, Axial generally always comes out with. Um, axial, axial. They, uh, like the Yetis, a lot of the Wraiths, they always generally have that three piece uh, sandwich style rim. So, keep them for now, you know. Probably end up putting the stock tires that came on the deadbolt on it. I've got the, uh, 
it's sitting underneath of this truck here, which is a future build I will get on about. Uh, but they're the Nitto Trail Grapplers, I believe. This obviously has the higher axes in the picture, but uh, being that I have to buy all the electronics, you probably just use what I've got for now for tires. Um, you also will need shorty batteries. Normal size batteries like what you'd run in either or back behind me or most RCs. Uh, the normal size LIBO will not fit in this so you have to buy the short packs. Um, they will fit and the dimensions are on the side of the box when you buy them. Here's the manual. Your very typical manual. Though what I've learned is a lot of the things in this manual are wrong. Unless this is an updated version, which I will I'm sure I'll find out when I start building this in the next couple days. It's there's a lot of sections in it that are apparently not very clear and also have some um, mistakes. So what I know is on the Axial, Axial website you can go right to where the capper is, go to where the, ma the manual is, and you can download the uh, digital manual and it's all up to date. So it's free, it's annoying, but it's free, so who cares. Then of course you have your body panels. What I like about all these is they are pre-drilled. So they will go exactly, not to make new, I think they might all come pre-drilled, I'm not sure. But uh, I never built the bomber kit, so I don't know about that. Um, I made my own side panels. I had a, I think a Chevy bodies and I cut the doors to make it look like it was, it had, you know, Chevy doors. But I like that they're pre-drilled to where they will need to fit. And so you have your uh, roof, doors, and hood. And I believe, uh, yes, yeah, so the hood on this truck is much like the bomber had the, I think it flipped forward. This, I believe, flips up and there's two little hidden... Um, the body posts hide underneath the frame and then you pull them out and it flips up like a normal normal hood of a truck. Got all the hardware. This looks like it's for the shocks. Because there's shocks in there. Obviously the I believe the underside and roof bunch of the cage there so you can definitely tell it's, it's it's there's not a lot of room there it's a very thin or not thin narrow truck um, especially when you compare it to like even the 10 twos are very it's a typical SCX eh. yeah, I guess it's about that wide maybe I'm just used to having that Big, like when you look at the wraith behind me, it's much wider. Uh, even then, I guess it's not just me. We'll get into this build another day. I've already done a video of that. Never mind. Never mind. You all know about that truck already. Uh, this looks like it's all the drive shafts. So the wild boar drive shafts. There, there. Sorry, get over. All the weight. So, got your 
servo mount there. I believe that would be the servo mount for the axle because it is servo on axle. Which is fine. It's a comp truck. It's not a trail truck. It's not meant to be like super scale. Um, but there's nothing wrong with a uh, servo on the on the axle. It's like when, with the Rift and all the other trucks. You just throw it on there because it's just it's a purpose built truck. It's not meant to you know, like the sit on a shelf and look scale or be on the trail looking scale. It's meant to do one thing, crawl. But there's all the really nice links. There might be... Nope, no extra links here, I don't think. Nope. And these ones are the pre-threaded links. So they have the they're kind of all one piece. You don't have to put the the uh, threaded screw. We're gonna call it. Oh no. Oh, that side's all right. Uh, yeah. So you don't have to put the uh, threaded screw piece, the tie rod end. Maybe we'll call it that. Into the links. They're already built in with the link. So I find that stronger. I've noticed there's been plenty of times where it just comes apart or it snaps or anything like that. That is all one piece stainless rod. I mean it's very strong so very happy about that. I know a lot of the trucks now come with these. I'm running an older one still. Uh, older design you can say. But the piece I've been wanting to see for a long time. And like I said, I've never had I got sharp my knife. I've never had a I've never had a portal axle on a truck. So this is the rear axle, obviously. And normally, that would be on this side. But being a curry, it's the rear pumpkin that comes off. And that's kind of cool, because I have never run an RC with that setup. So I'm very excited with that. Plus the gear down. Um, The gearing down of the portals, so that uh, really knocks down, just makes you crawl a lot slower. I've heard it's not that slow, but it is geared down, so, you know, take it as you go, kind of thing. From what I have learned, that little slot where you think a bearing would go, a bearing does not go there. Apparently it was a slight design flaw possibly, of the portal axle that Axial did. But irregardless, it is a very nice looking axle. Curry stamped into the back there. So I'm very excited to put these together. Probably be the first thing I do. There's all the hardware in there. Uh, all the little bits and pieces. Very, very excited about that. Uh, this would be the transmission. Transmission there. Now, I heard one of the videos, I thought I heard one of the guys say, I watched a bunch of videos trying to just learn little bits about this truck, that there was a nylon gear in here. I could be wrong, but if there is, that's kind of a bummer. Just because it's a kit, I kind of expect it to have 
hardened gears. But I could be wrong, and they're probably all hardened. I don't feel like taking it out and looking at the moment, because everything's kind of... I need to organize it all as I do it. I don't want to do that right now. Hopefully I'm wrong about that. Or else I'm going to have to buy... Transmission gears. But that's okay. There's all the fluid and stuff in there. Not fluid, your, uh, your grease. And possibly some Loctite. No, no. But front axle. So again, very excited. Let's actually look at that front axle. Very aggressive front axle. Very nice. There's the back. So you're very much the same. Um, just again, very sturdy plastic. This is the uh, axles never used this kind of plastic. So this is the Lozy plastic, and apparently it is very strong. So we're gonna find out. I'm hoping it is very strong. We don't have any issues. Um, here's a bunch of other bits and pieces. There's the back receiver box right there. I'll probably try and waterproof that as well as I can because uh, there's not a lot of room and I don't want to try and jam another RC or a receiver box in there that's waterproof. So I might just try and do what I can to waterproof this one. Um, there is, so you got like all your screws and stuff in here, probably for the body. Obviously the interior is right there. So you can't see it too well. But uh, there's that molded grill right there. So that's, again, yeah, that's just kind of cool. I like how Axel's really starting to do this molded plastic grills and accessories and stuff on the trucks. Just kind of helps add a little bit of scale points, I guess we could say. But here are the rims. Let's pull one in there. Take a peek at it. So it's not bad. Here's your back of it there. Obviously it comes off like this. Here's your rear ring. Slides into that. There is the front. So they're not bad. I mean for a free beadlock rim. Good enough to use for now. I can always pull rims off of the other truck, but I don't see the point in it right now. Let's throw the throw the uh, what was once stock on the deadbolt tire onto these and. Uh, Give some new life to those Nitto Trail, gra Nitto trail Grapplers. Oops. My coin. Um, and of course, you get your stick sticker sheets. So you have your... Uh, Got your interior, which has pretty much everything. Oh, it's got the belts on it, yeah. It's got your whole interior. Just 
sticker sheet there, which is nice. I have another one on the interior that I was going to run, but I kind of screwed it up. And that's an understatement. I fucked it up. Royally. Wanted to try and fit it in the power wagon. Not a good idea. Should have just left it. And free cool brand sway. Thank you for choosing Horizon. Just for registering your new Horizon hobby brand product. So that's in there. Uh, I guess I'll have to go register this and see what that all means. But the part I always like the most, big sticker guy, is these stickers. So, I don't really know the color I'm going to go on this, being that there's a lot of blue and red. Camera shut off. I'll have to check that out. I don't know what that means. Free Cool brand swag for registering. Stickers. Um, yeah, so I don't know what color this will be. Again, being that there's red and blue. Might have to go black. Just cuz. I think black might be a good idea. I'm going to stick with these stickers. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. But you definitely get a lot of cool stickers, as always. Um, so on the bottom end there, you got your kind of sponsorship stickers there. So those will go on. It's probably on the door. Um, and you got capper everywhere. You're venting. Yeah. So you'll definitely have a lot of spare stickers. But if you were to see my toolbox, it's covered in stickers. Mostly Yeti stickers. So yeah. And I've got a... Uh, I will have electronics coming soon for the truck, so I'll get it built up. And then uh, I'll do a video as I'm going. And uh, the electronics are on the way. Well, not on the way yet, but they're picked out and put aside at a, uh, I'm on Vancouver Island, he's just uh, in Vancouver, um, so he, uh, he basically, I don't know exactly, it's maybe out of his house kind of thing, but he supplies a lot of the guys um, in my region, and uh, yeah, so He's got a lot of the electronics that people need. So I've got a Hobbywing 1080 ESC brushed, a Holmes Hobby Crawlmaster 12 turn motor, I believe, but it is a Crawlmaster, and a 430 ounce torque servo. Waiting to be shipped here. Obviously, I just bought a truck, so once the money comes back, I'll order those. But they will be here soon. And then, as for my remote, I use GT5. It's got all the, you know, one, two, one there. It's got everything I need. So, I don't need a remote. I'll have to buy another receiver for this, which I believe is about 30 bucks, uh, if not less. I don't remember. So yeah, a new build is starting, just as one ended, which I will do a video on probably when I am just finished this video. But like I said, I'm very excited to do this. Uh, I have never done a capper before. Uh, I've never done the portal axles, only a transmission. This is a kit that I have never done before. So I'm diving into something completely new. Like when it comes to the SCX-10-2s or the, even the 
STX10s, I, I know how to build those. A Wraith, I've built from pieces to a full truck, same with the bomber. I've ripped it apart, put it all back together. No, absolutely no manual use of those ones. So it's kind of nice to actually do something that I've never done before. Uh, kind of have to use my head a little bit to build it properly. So very excited. And, uh, yeah. Sorry for the wait. Um, I think it's on... We'll just go with on May 3rd. Our baby is a month old. So, baby girl. Um, I've just kind of spent the past... Realistically, about over just over a month, I guess, maybe four weeks, whatever it would be. Um, just spending a lot of family time, just doing a lot of hanging out with them, and not ending this stuff, but just you know, this stuff can wait, and just really enjoying my new family. So. New addition to the family, I should say. But everybody's happy. Baby's a poop machine. And, uh... She gets it from her mom. Me. And, uh, yeah. So, very excited. And got a new build. New baby, new build. Lots of fun. Thanks for sticking around. And I will hopefully have a run video done. I'd like to do one this weekend, but it's raining. And this camera, I don't want to get it wet, so at some point, I'll have a run video out with a truck that I will do a video on once I clean this table off. Thanks, everybody. Peace out.